Hi, my name is Christian Posta. I'm a global field CTO at solo.io. In this series, we're going to take a look at agent identity and access management. We'll see how agent identity can be bound to the agent and how we can use on behalf of tokens scoped to users to call agents and call MCP servers on which then we can write access policy. So in the first step, this is, this is part one, we'll take a look at logging into our application using the enterprise's single sign-on identity provider. In this case, we'll use Keycloak, but it could easily have been Microsoft Entra or Okta or, or whatever. So we'll sign in. We'll sign in with a particular user, the MCP user. So let's sign in. Now, the first thing that we want to see is we have our single sign-on identity. We have our uh, user identity. If we take a look at uh, some of the access tokens that were generated as part of this. Now this, this happens to use OIDC, but it, it could also have used SAML v2. And now if we put the token in here, we can take a look at our, our token. So the first thing that we see is that this token is um, ha has been issued to a particular user. This is the MCP user. The subject is in our uh, system is this in, in Keycloak. We also see that this user is assigned to a few different roles, so supply chain, and that the um, audience for this token can be used for exchanging or calling into our services, but the services have to go through our agent gateway, which is where we will apply policies. Another interesting claim that you might notice here is that we are explicitly ahead of time specifying which AI agents can act on behalf of this user. This is uh, important from an enterprise policy standpoint, we want to knowingly approve and allow agents to act on behalf of a user, uh, even if they are in a call chain. So now this is this is optional. You don't have to have this, um, but uh, it does allow you to ahead of time scope down and control which agents can can act uh, as, as a user. Right, okay, so now we're logged in. We can initiate a call to uh, our agent. And in this case, from this app, we'll be able to call the supply chain agent. So if I click on this and call, we should see it'll do an analysis, give its response. And, uh, and we see we do get a, a response here. We could also have this agent call another agent, um, maybe to do some sort of market analysis. And that market analysis might require using MCP server tools. Um, so if we give a call to, um, so if we say perform market analysis and run our agent, we can see that in this case, it's responded with a market analysis report. And for demo purposes, I've, um, I've uh, built the market analysis uh, MCP server to be able to return the list of tools that it has available to it and can possibly call. In this case, we see we can call uh, tools from an MCP server called time. We can also call tools from an MPC server called uh, everything. And there's also tools available to us from the sequential thinking MCP server. We're going to go into a little bit more detail in the next videos uh, about how we can control policy to these tools. But at the moment, what we're going to take a look at is the traces and the flow from the back end, which we saw the back end will call into the supply chain agent. This will go through our agent gateway. So we'll click on that. 
we can take a look at the clause that's going through the agent gateway. The first thing we'll see is that this is an authenticated call that um, we're calling the supply chain agent. And we can see in the token that we have, the, the subject is the same subject that we have or, or, or from the um, identity provider. But we can see that the actor that's acting on, uh, on behalf of the user is this supply chain backend. Now this is very important. Um, we can see that the, uh, the token audience is for our gateway, but, but now the token audience has been changed to a supply chain agent. So what happened here? So in our call from the application to the agent, we did a token exchange. Um, and if we, let's see, if I come here, Max, let's go here, let's go to our back end, um, and let's scroll up, oh, let's do a full screen. We'll scroll up, we see the response, but um, we've also logged for demo purposes, the token that's been sent from the back end to supply chain agent. And if we take a look at that token, it's not the same token as the identity token that we used to log in. We can see this is a different token. This is an on behalf of token. So we did an exchange that says, hey, I am the supply chain back end application and I'm acting on behalf of this particular subject, which is the user's identity. And I'm calling the supply chain agent, or we'll see that in the, in the call flow. And the agent gateway is there to validate all of this. So if we go a few steps further, all right, so maybe we're not at agent gateway. So this was on the first hop. Um, oh, let's come back here, click back in here. Uh, oh, I need to do something with the call flow. Okay, so if we come back here now, supply chain agent ended up calling out to a market analysis agent. And that market analysis agent called out to an MCP server, as you can see here, uh, on, on agent gateway. Now, if we go into the market analysis agent, uh, market analysis agent, so this is right before we call the MCP server, go full screen, and take a look at that token. We can see it's not the same token that we just looked at. Again, it has been exchanged to correct the audiences and, um, and to pass through the user's identity and specify who is the current actor. In this case, we can see the current actor is the market analysis agent. So this will be calling the MCP server. But this was authorized by the supply chain. This call was authorized by the supply chain agent, which was authorized by the originating backend. So we can see the causality in the, in the flow of the calls cryptographically. Again, the, uh, the subject is the original identity from the identity provider, and this is an on behalf of token. So now we can write our access policies with this much richer information about what's happening based on the identity of the agent, which we'll talk about in, in the next section but as well as the on behalf of semantics of the token that's being passed. And we'll see in the next section that even if you somehow stole this token, it cannot be used, it cannot be replayed. Uh, we'll see that in the, in the next, uh, next part, part two. So I'll pause here. Again, we were able to um, implement 
agent to agent communication over the A to A protocol, by the way. We can call the MCP servers and we can see the list of tools here. But under the covers, we have a very strong foundation for agent identity and access management. We'll continue this in part two. Thanks.